Welcome back, everybody. The world, especially throughout the past year, can be a scary place for kids. It can be a scary place for adults, too. So, integrative and pediatric mental health expert Dr. Roseanne Capana Hodge is here with tips on how to talk to kids about the things they see going on around them. So, first question tell me why developmentally appropriate language is really important when talking to children about difficult subject matters. It's so important to use developmentally appropriate language when talking to kids about tough subjects because we want to meet kids where they're at so they can better understand and really digest these difficult concepts which might be upsetting and we don't want to use a lot of adult words which will be difficult for them to process. And so what are some maybe warning signs and symptoms that children might be experiencing stress of some sort? I mean, I think we're all experiencing stress right now, but what should parents look out for? Signs and symptoms of stress in children is very unique because kids show us their difficulties through their behaviors. They're not going to tell us, mom, I'm having a hard time. They're going to show discomfort. And that's typically with what we call somatic complaints, which is physical issues. So they may complain of belly aches or headaches. Uh, kids in particular, as well as teens, will show difficulties in, in terms of stress in their sleep. So they may have difficulty settling for sleep or wake up at night. But those are the signs and symptoms that kids typically show, as well as changes in behavior. Are they suddenly irritable or tearful or angry? Uh, anger is a missed sign of stress and anger. Um, sorry, anger is a missed sign um, that we often don't think about in terms of stress and anxiety, but it's a frequent way that kids show their stress. And how do you think the events of the past year will affect these children moving forward? So how 2020 is going to affect our generation is an unknown. But what we can look at is how other children have survived major events like the war, um, our multiple wars that we've had, and now we have, you know, adults. So really how these difficult events impacts our children's mental health is very much determined about what is happening at their home. So even though the world is really stressful and boy, have there been some major, major events that have sort of thrown us all, when parents sort of put their oxygen mask on and are managing these stressful events in the best way that they can, that doesn't mean perfectly, but talking about it and demonstrating good coping skills, kids are going to be okay. Now let's talk about reassurance and support. What are some of the best ways that parents can offer that? Yeah, so, you know, when your kid is stressed, I mean, it's always a good idea to hug your kid, give them extra TLC, and really try to be present and engaged because we're very much on our devices, we're working from home, and it's okay to say to your child, give me a minute, I'm going to wrap this up, and then I'm going to put my phone away, and I'm going to spend time with you. But reassurance is important because we want to tell kids things are going to be okay, these are hard times. This is what we are doing about it as a family to make things better. And I like to get kids involved in that and have them have a sense of control, which helps ease stress and anxiety, and find ways that they think they can contribute to helping us get through, as a family, difficult times. Are there any last minute tips or guidance that you have for parents who might be watching? Yeah, I, so for parents that are struggling or maybe hitting this pandemic wall right now, you know, the most important thing you need to do is you need to put your oxygen mask on. And that means being a good role model for stress. So talking to your kids, like, I'm having a hard day today, and this is what I'm going to do about it, but incorporating as many healthy lifestyle things as you can. So doing things like, you know, purposeful breath work, right? Uh, four, seven, eight breath, meditation, yoga, and really trying to get your kids moving as well as having fun. So as much as you can do to bring light and laughter during these troubling times are things that kids will remember and hold on to and it will help them get through this challenging, unprecedented time. Well, thank you for sharing that with us today. We appreciate your time. Thank you.